Oh, well, as you can tell by right now, I have a bug in my throat. It's a lot better today than it was yesterday. Uh, I do not have a sore throat. It's not sore at any fashion. It isn't sore. It's just filled with goop. <laughs> and it's, it's, so, and, and I feel very weak. I feel very But nevertheless, I'm here. And you are too. Yeah. <coughs> when the church put together the readings for Sundays in the beginning, they put together an Old Testament reading, a New Testament reading, a psalm, and a gospel. Those four readings from the scriptures, and they all seem to have a pattern. I always, always called it the golden thread. And all of a sudden, along very recently, they came and said, you know, there's a lot of scriptures that we don't read on Sunday that are omitted every year. And so they revised the lectionary and added more readings. And I think they destroyed the magic golden thread. Today, looking at the scripture readings, they're all different su subjects. And in order to even pick anything, you can't preach on all of them. You got to pick one of them and concentrate on that. We could talk about every one of the readings for, for each time. But I'm looking at the reading today from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. I think it's a time for us to hear a story that we need to hear, and sometimes we only get to hear it at funerals. And it's a story about what happens to us after we die. What has God got in store for us? These are a couple of scripture <coughs> passages that kind of explain that and then lead up to what Paul said in Corinthians today. Jesus at the Last Supper told his apostles the following. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there were many dwelling places. And if there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Promise from the Lord to come back and take us and so we will be with him. That leads up to another reading from St. Paul. And this, is, this kind of follows right upon it. Paul says to the Thessalonians, We do not want you to be unaware, brothers, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. And that's the key. You think of somebody who doesn't believe in the resurrection, and have somebody die, what hope do they have? I mean, it's, it, it's got to be just a hollow feeling. Whereas we have the hope in the resurrection. And that should give us at least some comfort to know that this is only temporary. And that we are going to all be reunited because the Lord has promised. I want you to be unaware, brothers. Paul, Paul at this point, really, really thought that Jesus would come a second time before he died. Well, he's about 2,000 years off on that one, wasn't he? He realized that people were worried that people who died ahead of them would miss out on the coming down of Jesus a second time. And he says, no, 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 no. This is what's going to happen. For if we believe that Jesus died in rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep, meaning those who have died ahead of us. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. We're not going to go before them. For the Lord himself, with the word of command, and the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. And then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them, in the clouds to meet the the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord, and therefore console one another with these words. It's a great consolation to know that all those who have died before will be resurrected, and all of us together will meet the Lord in the air. It's kind of a when Jesus ascended into heaven, you know, he, he, they, they they saw this vision of his body going up, and they, they the second the second coming of Christ was he's coming back down again. And when he comes back down again, that will be the end. He'll gather all of the Christians around him, all of the faithful around him, and we'll live in perfect peace forever and ever. And ever. That's, 
that's the promise of the Lord. That is, that is what's called the hope of the Christian. Now we go to the, to today's reading, St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Paul says, We know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and will bring us with you, meaning the Corinthians, will bring us with the Corinthians into his presence. Then he goes on. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer, outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. Well, when you got something like this, you say, well, this outer nature is just deteriorating big time. And, you know, every one of us has this or that ailment. And this mechanism is, is falling apart. I mean, it's going to do that. So he says, that is the outside. But the inside is getting more and more and more strong. The inside, the spiritual part, the part that will last, that's the important part. And that will not deteriorate. And then he goes on, for this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. All these bad things, all these inconveniences, they're just preparing us for that great onslaught of wonderful things that are going to happen to us in the kingdom. Because we look not at what can be seen, but what is unseen. Now, it goes on. If we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, and this thing goes away, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. We've got a new body that he's going to give to the resurrected people. The old body is dead, gone, deteriorated, gone back to dust. He's got a new body prepared for each one of us. And it's different. We don't, can't even explain it. can't even describe it. We don't even know what it is, but it's neat. It's wonderful. In fact, he, he speaks about it as a great, it's so heavy and so wonderful that we can't even imagine it. Now there we've, we've found the hope of the Christian. All those who have died and don't have that hope, they are living in grief. Christians don't live in grief. We live in faith, hope, hopefully love. Christians are different because of the revelation of Jesus Christ. We are called into his kingdom, and his kingdom will last forever, and we don't go off into grief like the others who have no hope. Amen. Amen. Amen.